How does Josh Allen stack up against the other top quarterbacks in the AFC? I'm breaking that down today on Locked On Bills. You are Locked On Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino from the Draft Network, and I'm your host of Locked On Bills. Happy Thursday to you, and thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day. And as a reminder to you, we are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Well, folks, this is going to be a fun conversation today. I am going to examine this young, dynamic crop of quarterbacks in the AFC and compare Josh Allen to them. And this was asked of me a while back for a herd mentality question, and I'm like, there's no way I can fit this in as just a standalone question. This is a a full podcast. This is a full discussion. So today is a good day to have it. Tomorrow I'll have a guest. And then next week we focus our attention to the Los Angeles Rams. And so this was a great opportunity to kind of fit this conversation in. And so here's what we're going to do. Like I said, there's this young wave of dynamic top quarterbacks in the AFC. Their names are Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, and Lamar Jackson. I'm focusing in on those five players. Those are the young, dynamic guys. If you put all the quarterbacks or you put all the players, if you will, if you put all the players into a hat and you redrafted the entire NFL, I think the first five picks would be some combination of those players. And the AFC for the foreseeable future is going to be dictated by these young quarterbacks. Now, there's some other exciting young talents. There's Trevor Lawrence. There's Zach Wilson. You know, Mac Jones, whatever you want to think about him. There's some other guys. Tua. Look, I know not everyone's going to agree with all those names. And eventually they may join this conversation, but they're not there yet. They're not close. And I didn't include guys like Russell Wilson because, look, he's he's much further along in his career than these players. I think the future of the AFC will be dictated by Allen, Mahomes, Herbert, Burrow, and Jackson. And so what I'm going to do today is look at all of those players, specifically, in 11 different categories. And I'm going to rank them in 11 different categories. And 10 of those categories are the 10 traits that we use at the draft network to evaluate quarterbacks. When we evaluate quarterbacks, we score them in 10 categories, which will be the 10 that I use today on this podcast. And then I added an 11th category for this podcast, and it is accomplishments, right? I I think the difference between what I do from a college scouting perspective is I'm forecasting people to the NFL. And so that's all good and dandy, but these guys have played in the NFL. They've played multiple seasons in the NFL. And so I want to give an entire category to what they've accomplished to this point, because I think that's relevant in this overall conversation. Now, one thing that I will also say before I get into this is I'm sure I'm not joined just by Bills fans today. I'm sure there are Chiefs fans and Bengals, Ravens, Chargers fans, maybe just fans of other teams in general that want to hear me stack up these players. I'm aware of that. And while I am not going to be shy about being a fan of the Buffalo Bills and loving Josh Allen, right? That that is very true about me. I am going to take an objective look here. And I have great respect for all five of these quarterbacks. Great respect. I think they're all phenomenal. All five of these teams and fan bases should be elated with what they have. And as somebody who's been in, in football media since, I guess, 2016, some of my least favorite conversations that we have are who's better, right? And when I say who's better, I'm not talking about a tier one player compared to a tier four player. That's easy. I hate when we split hairs in terms of the top tier of guys and then lose appreciation for how good these players are. So maybe you're not, you're not going to love where I have your, your guy slotted. But I do want you to know that the reason that they're in this conversation is because I have a great, great deal of respect for who they are as football players. 
and really for all five of these dudes as dudes, right? These are all legit dudes. These are trucks, not trailers in the NFL. And what I mean by that, these are guys that you can win football games because of. You're going to be a competitive football team every single year because this guy's your quarterback. So before you try to say that there's any level of disrespect for any of these players, that ain't the case. I think these are all phenomenal talents. All right. I think all the disclaimers are out of the way. Let's get into this conversation. The first category that I'm going to rank these guys in is accuracy. And I have it ranked Joe Burrow 1, Patrick Mahomes 2, Justin Herbert 3, Josh Allen 4, Lamar Jackson 5. Now, I do want to offer analysis on every category, but I got to be mindful of the clock here. So I'm going to try to be as concise as I possibly can. I think Joe Burrow, it was easy for me to pick him as the most accurate quarterback here. I think his accuracy that he showed in college has quickly translated to the NFL, and no matter where he wants to slot the football, he can put it where he wants to. He has exceptional accuracy. Patrick Mahomes, an exceptionally accurate quarterback. I have him at number two, where not only is he accurate, but he's accurate regardless of his throwing platform, and that's where I gained so much respect for him and just the arm angles that he has at his disposal, how regardless of the mechanics, regardless of the sequencing, he can put the football where he wants it to go. And I have a lot of respect for the amount of yards after catch Patrick Mahomes is able to generate. And I know that Tyreek Hill is certainly a an asset there, and Travis Kelsey is an asset there. But Mahomes helps maximize those guys because he's very consistent with ball placement and allowing guys to stay up and produce after the catch. And number three, Justin Herbert. I mean, I, I had a conversation with Jim Nagy, the executive director of the Senior Bowl this week, and we talked about J- Justin Herbert as one of as being one of the most misevaluated quarterbacks of recent time. And I have I have plenty of misses. Okay, I have plenty of misses in my scouting process. Justin Herbert's not one of them. And I think Oregon really restricted so much of what has made Justin Herbert a phenomenal young quarterback in the NFL. And I think from a ball placement perspective, this guy makes unbelievable throws, and he's very consistent with the routine stuff as well. I have Josh Allen number four. I think Josh Allen is an accurate quarterback, but I don't think he's a top-tier accurate quarterback. I think Josh Allen will tell you that he's got some ball placement stuff that he needs to improve upon, especially in the quick game. And I think that's why the Bills and Josh Allen specifically has received so little yards after catches because due in part to Josh Allen's ball placement, I think he can be better. So I think you kind of have a a tier here of Burrow, Mahomes, and Herbert, a little drop off down to Allen, and then a little drop off down to Lamar Jackson, where I think Lamar Jackson is a really good quarterback, but I don't think... He's a really good quarterback because he's consistently accurate and throws outside the numbers for Lamar are still very, very hit or miss. Let's move on to arm strength. I have this Josh Allen one, Patrick Mahomes two, Justin Herbert three, Lamar Jackson four, Joe Burrow five. Josh Allen has an elite arm in terms of arm strength. He can dial up the fastball. He can fit the ball in windows anywhere he wants to on the field. He has access to the whole field. Unbelievable arm talent from distance to velocity. He is elite. The top of the top. Patrick Mahomes, not too far down. I mean, you're talking, you're probably splitting hairs here. Flip a coin. Everything I said about Josh Allen, apply it to Patrick Mahomes. Justin Herbert, right there too. I mean, those top three, really unreal arm talents in terms of arm strength, in terms of distance and velocity. Lamar Jackson's got a big arm, too. He can drive the football as well. I think you can, where maybe with Lamar, I I put him a, a t- tick below Allen, Mahomes, and Herbert is, I don't think he's got quite the velocity. I don't think he has quite the control on the velocity. And then Joe Burrow, number five. I mean, that's the thing about Joe Burrow is he, he doesn't have top-tier physical tools, and that includes arm strength. He's got average to above average arm strength, but he's not, He's not close to Lamar Jackson, much less the top three. Let's move on to decision-making. I have Joe Burrow, one, Patrick Mahomes, two, Josh Allen, three, Justin Herbert, four, Lamar Jackson, five. 
Joe Burrow at number one. I mean, this guy is exceptional with understanding where to go with the football. His ability to process pre-snap and his ability to confirm the picture post-snap and put the football where it needs to go in terms of a decision-making process, unbelievable. He is unbelievable. I have Patrick Mahomes number two, and I think that there's areas of Patrick Mahomes that I'll get to in other categories where I think you can kind of take exception with his process a little bit. But what I appreciate about Patrick Mahomes is the style of football that he plays and how very infrequent he turns over the ball. He's a dynamic playmaker that makes consistent big plays and rarely turns it over. I think that's a really, really unique marriage and part of why I think he's number two in this category. Josh Allen, number three. I think Josh Allen does very well to pick his spots. I think that's something that has improved. There's been times in watching Josh Allen throughout my process of watching Josh Allen through the years where I thought he's kind of chased some big plays. I think that's gotten a lot better. But I think that there are enough warts that we still see from time to time with maybe some over-aggressive decisions, sometimes with being a little bit too averse to taking some of the routine stuff that allows me to put Burrow and Mahomes ahead of him. I don't think Josh Allen's a bad decision maker. I just think that he's not as good as Burrow or Mahomes. I have Herbert at four, perfectly good decision maker. I think there's room for him to grow a little bit with um, some of his turnover worthy throws, not a huge problem, but I think there's just, there's growth there. I think he's got to take a step and I, I'll be honest with you, I think just Justin Herbert can do a better job of weaponizing his legs. And I think that plays into decision-making. Do you know how to pick your spots as a runner? And I think Justin Herbert does well, but I, I'd like to see more, to be completely honest with you. And that's part of why I have Allen ahead of him. Lamar Jackson, I have at number five here, where I think, I, I almost hate this for Lamar because I think the scheme restricts his ability to showcase himself as a decision-maker. Hope that makes sense to you, but they they don't allow him to be a true progression style passer in a lot of ways where there's a lot of manufactured stuff. There's a lot of manu design runs. Um, there's a lot of one read and take off with the ball and assessing if that's the scheme. I'm sure a lot of it is how much that's Lamar. The bottom line here is I don't think that he deserves to be higher than Burrow, Mahomes, Allen, or Herbert. It's almost the start of the NFL season. I love this time of year. And if you're into sports betting or fantasy, you need a competitive edge to win. That's why I highly recommend the Elias Game Plan app. It's the ultimate sports betting and fa fantasy companion for the NFL, NBA, and MLB. Elias Game Plan is the only sports app from the most trusted name in sports stats, Elias Sports Bureau. It's the official statisticians of U.S. pro leagues, including the NFL. Their app lets you access team and player stats, head-to-head -head team comparisons, and Elias insights from the Elias Sports Bureau's research team. This app is really your one-stop source for player news and league-validated player stats and team records, expert game analysis for betting, building your fantasy team, and impressing your friends. It's perfect for the preseason. You get player previews to help you draft a winning fantasy team and team previews so you know what to expect as the regular season kicks off. Take my advice, download the Elias Game Plan app today, and with new features available all the time, it's time for you to take your game to the next level. The NFL season is right around the corner, so don't wait. Find Elias Game Plan in the App Store or Play Store today. Let's get to some more categories here. The next one is poise. I have Mahomes 1, Burrow 2, Allen 3, Herbert 4, Jackson five. We'll start with Patrick Mahomes where, I mean, the guy just never seems rattled, right? Ever. Pressure, things are breaking down around him. He finds a way, right? He makes some of the most unbelievable plays you'll ever see. The amount of times that his team has been down and he erased those deficits very, very quickly speaks to his poise. I mean, how about that Houston playoff game where what were they down like 28 to nothing before you can blink? The next thing you know, they're up like 50 to 28. I mean, Patrick Mahomes is unshakable. Unreal talent. Joe Burrow, number two. 
I mean, you want to talk about poise. Oh, my goodness, right? <laughs> Joe Burrow is special. And obviously, this my appreciation for his poise started at LSU. And then what he's done with the Bengals, the, the horrible pass protection that he's had to this point, the guy is unshakable. I did a um, – the Bengals are one of my teams that I'm responsible for over at the Draft Network, so I need to know the team in depth. And part of what I recently did is I went back and I watched their entire playoff stretch. And the toughness that Joe Burrow has is incredible. But what I really appreciate about him is this dude gets sacked all the time. All the time. He's hit all the time. And that dude gets up so quickly. He is unshakable. You will never get the impression that Joe Burrow is rattled. I love his demeanor. I love his demeanor. Josh Allen, number three. I mean, we're we're splitting hairs here. I mean, Josh Allen's special just like that, too. I mean, unbelievably competitive. How he exchanged blows with Patrick Mahomes in that playoff game. How he's answered every test to this point in terms of the doubt. He's met moment after moment after a shaky start to his NFL career. I think that's what's really different about Josh Allen to all of these players. All of these players had instant success in the NFL when they got on the field. When I got on the field, right? Because I that's why I said that specifically for Patrick Mahomes. Because when he became the starter, it was pretty instant success. Josh Allen had to play through some failures. He had to play through some struggles. He had to play through a really bad supporting cast. That's unlike what a lot of these other guys had. And so for him to be able to kind of get, I mean, honestly, get through that rookie season and then just take step after step after step speaks to his poise as a person, but also how he shows up in terms of managing games. And, um, you know, I know that last year the Bills weren't very good in one score games, but the year before they were awesome, right? Like five and one. I don't think, I don't think the Bills ever feel like they're out of a game. And that's because of what Josh Allen's capable of doing and how he's wired. Justin Herbert, number four. I mean, that game, what was that week 17 game last year? So against the Raiders, if I'm not mistaken. Unbelievable poise in that game. J- Justin Herbert's a special player as well in this regard. I just don't know that the sample size is big enough for him to be in this conversation with Mahomes, Burrow, and Allen. And I know that you can maybe debate Burrow there, but what Burrow did in in that coming out of the ACL tear all last season, staying poised throughout the playoffs, that's that's what I mean by the sample. The sample size might not be the same, but the sample size is is more significant in what Burrow did in, in, in that stretch to put him over Herbert. And then Lamar Jackson, you know, I think I think he's really poised as well. I just don't know that we've seen the same level of big moments from Lamar. He certainly had some really special moments, but I don't think it stacks up with the other four. So he sits at number five for me here. Progressions, progressions. This is the next category. Joe Burrow, one. Josh Allen, two. Justin Herbert, three. Patrick Mahomes, four. Lamar Jackson, five. Again, what we talked about with with Joe Burrow, he's not not the most physically gifted of this group, but he's probably the smartest in terms of ability to process, ability to understand his route combinations, the timing of his drops, his sequencing, how he aligns himself. I mean, the way that he approaches the game and – a result of that is his ability to work progressions and use his eyes and manipulate coverage. I mean, he's unbelievable. He's a progression style passer through and through. He doesn't have the same movement skills that these other guys have to, hey, okay, first read's not there. You, you glance at the second, you take off. Joe Burrow don't have that in his bag. He has to be able to work progressions. And his production speaks to it. Josh Allen, number two. You know, Josh Allen is a a player, you know, you look at average time to throw, Josh Allen's towards the bottom of the league all the time. And that's because he is more than willing to exhaust progressions. He's willing to let it play out. He's willing to let that deep over clear. He's willing to make second window throws. He has a really keen understanding of coverage rotation and what that means for spacing available. And so... I think Josh does a really, really good job of working progressions and, and, and the growth there compared to where he was as a rookie, where it was, hey, chuck it deep or take off, right? We're, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a guy in motion. We're going to see if it's man or zone. 
get your indicator. If it's man, it probably is at that point in Josh Allen's career. Let's run a vertical route. If somebody's open, chuck it. If not, take off. Think about that compared to the Josh Allen we see now. Unbelievable growth. Justin Herbert, number three. I, this is a this is something I love about Justin Herbert, where at Oregon, he everybody said one read passer. Well, that's because he was miscoached. At the NFL level, he's a good progression style passer. And I feel like, man, if Oregon didn't limit him in that regard, <laughs> I mean, how much better would he be today? And how good is he despite that? Does a good job working pro- progressions. Patrick Mahomes, number four. I don't think this is a strength of Patrick Mahomes. I think Patrick Mahomes still lives in that world a little bit of touchdown to check down or, or touchdown to scramble and, and work off script. I don't think he's very consistent of go, at going one to two to three. I think that's why they had to implement so much quick game and so much screen game to what they do recently is to keep him on schedule a little bit. I think this is a growth area for Patrick Mahomes. I think Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL. All right? So understand that. But I think this is a growth area for Patrick Mahomes where he could become a better progression-style passer. He he um he's one of the court that the, the, in terms of pressure on the quarterback that the quarterback's responsible for meaning look, an offensive lineman didn't get beat. The the ball was just held onto. Patrick Mahomes is towards the bottom of the league, like near the very bottom. And I think it's because he's got to get better at going through progressions and getting the ball where it needs to go. He's unbelievable off script. He's got the deep ball. He's got all the talent. This is a growth area. And Lamar Jackson, we kind of talked about this a little bit. Some of the other categories where he doesn't really get a chance to be a progression style passer. And I think that he's got to, He's got to prove his ability with his arm to access other areas of the field so that way he, he could put more stress on defenses. He's unbelievably gifted as a runner. He works the middle of the field, but his ability to get the ball outside the numbers is questionable, and I think that limits him as a progression-style player. Release. Patrick Mahomes, one. Josh Allen, two. Joe Burrow, three. Justin Herbert, four. Omar Jackson, five. Now, release, there's a lot of things baked into this. Um, It's your trigger. It's your throwing motion. It's your ability to release the football from different arm slots. Those are things that I'm taking into account here. Patrick Mahomes, unbelievable. The trigger that he has, his ability to uh, get the football off regardless of his platform, the arm angles, the quick, compact throwing motion, the velocity he can generate. Just a flick, I mean, unbelievable, right? But it's really probably the arm slots that – the arm slots and ability to control the football with any arm slot puts him number one for me. Take everything I said about Mahomes, apply it to Allen, and just take a little bit off. Joe Burrow, um, really quick trigger, very efficient throwing motion. Just doesn't necessarily have as many clubs in the bag, if you will, as Mahomes and Allen in my mind. Uh, Justin Herbert, four. I mean, I have no criticisms for him. I just don't think he's better than Mahomes, Allen, or Burrow. And then Jackson, last, and I think that comes from maybe not having as quick of a trigger. Maybe sometimes his arm, he's got different arm angles, but kind of has a, a, a lower arm slot to begin with. So I think there's probably some room for, for Lamar to get better there, have him at five here. Pocket, manipula- pocket manipulation, excuse me. Josh Allen, one. Justin Herbert, two. Omar Jackson, three. Patrick Mahomes, four. Joe Burrow, five. You ever see somebody try to sack Josh Allen? (laughs) But it doesn't go well for him. His ability to not only move within the pocket, but make people miss and fall off of him in the pocket is really special. And I think just his ability to navigate the pocket is really special. Justin Herbert, very similar situation. His his ability to keep his eyes down the field, move, slide, manipulate, big, strong dude. He's got all the stuff, too. Lamar Jackson, obviously a special, elusive, dynamic, quick-twitched athlete. He can make people miss and um, can really create space and move his platform at a high level. Patrick Mahomes has all of that, too. 
But where I have Patrick, or the reason I have Patrick Mahomes number four here is this is where I want to apply some criticism to him for being a pocket drifter, right? There are a lot of times where he just kind of fades, right? And I think that takes away. Obviously, Patrick, it's hard to be overly critical of Patrick Mahomes because the what he's accomplished is unbelievable. But I do think it's worth mentioning that he's a pocket drifter and he invites some pressure, and he's responsible for a lot of pressure. One of the highest rates of pressure he's responsible for is because of him, and I think part of that is because he has those pocket-drifting tendencies. And I think the Chiefs have had to change the way they play offense a little bit to kind of protect him from that. Joe Burrow at number five, really, really, really good pocket movement skills, but different, right? He's a guy that can set his feet, move very subtle, but, I mean, he guys aren't going to fall off of him. He's not going to out-athlete people in the pocket. He's got enough, but, I mean, he's not that type of dude like Allen, Herbert, Jackson, and Mahomes in that regard. Joe Burrow wins in different ways. Are you one of those people who thinks it's okay to drive stoned? What's the worst that can happen? You end up driving below the speed limit? It's no big deal, right? Wrong. The truth is your reaction time slow way down when you're high. You not only put yourself in danger, but everyone around you. Talk about a buzzkill. Stop kidding yourself. It's not okay to drive high. If you've been using marijuana in any form, do not get behind the wheel. If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high, get a DUI. We got some more categories to get to. I hope you've enjoyed this discussion. I really have. I'm having fun. Having fun here on this podcast today, talking quarterbacks and breaking down traits. I mean, this is what I do. I love it. Love it. Uh, Next one is mobility. Lamar Jackson, number one. How easy was that, right? Unbelievable. Josh Allen, two. Patrick Mahomes, three. Justin Herbert, four. Joe Burrow, five. Lamar Jackson, just an unreal athlete and how he uses that to create big plays with his arm and his legs. I mean, This guy's like, if he's healthy, he's going to rush for 1,000 yards as a quarterback. Unreal talent. Josh Allen, unbelievable runner with the football, right? He's like uh, George Kittle with the ball in his hands. Big, powerful, can make people miss, can break tackles, can extend plays, throw on the run. I mean, he's just unreal in terms of what he brings, in terms of size, athleticism, power as a runner. One of the most accomplished dual-threat quarterbacks through, what is he, four seasons than, that's ever been in the league. Really, really rare company with what he's been able to prove with his arm and his legs. Patrick Mahomes, number three. I think there's a little drop-off here. I think Jackson's in a tier of his own. Allen's behind him in a tier of his own. And then there's a drop-off to Mahomes, who's a good athlete. He just doesn't necessarily weaponize his legs as much. Now, he can move and make throws on the move, but in terms of that pure running ability, he he's not like Allen or Jackson. And I think you take everything that I applied to Mahomes, stick it to Herbert there at number four, and Joe Burrow very, very obviously number five. Leadership. Josh Allen, one. Patrick Mahomes, two. Joe Burrow, three. Lamar Jackson, four. Justin Herbert, five. Let me say this right off the bat because these guys are all top-notch leaders, okay? Top-notch leaders. And you're really happy about having them as the face of your franchise. I have Josh Allen at one. And, and I mean, what, what can you, what, what can you say about him? I mean, just unbelievable what he's meant to the city of Buffalo, to the Buffalo bills, the way that this team loves him and embraces him, how high profile players like Emmanuel Sanders, like Stefan Diggs, like Von Miller, how they gravitate towards him. It's unbelievable. I mean, Everything about Josh Allen is perfect for Buffalo. And um, really impressed, really, really impressed with that component of Josh Allen. Same thing about Patrick Mahomes. I mean, what he's meant to Kansas City, how guys have gravitated towards him, it's really special. Joe Burrow, (laughs) unreal leader, right? The toughness, the poise, the accomplishments, special. Lamar Jackson. I mean, this guy has battled, this guy has been doubted, and he keeps showing up, and he keeps producing big plays for this football team. He's special. And Justin Herbert, you know, I think he leads in different ways. He's probably a little bit more quiet. He might not be that alpha personality, but 
put a helmet on that dude, and he's special on the field, and I think guys rally around him. Mechanics, Joe Burrow, one. Justin Herbert, two. Patrick Mahomes, three. Josh Allen, four. Lamar Jackson, five. I'll be honest with you, I don't have – I don't have big mechanical issues with any of these players. I think Joe Joe Burrow just – I mean, you talk about beautiful sequencing and throwing of a football. I mean, Joe Burrow's got all of it. So does Justin Herbert. So does Patrick Mahomes. Josh Allen I have at number four. I think there's probably a little bit of a drop-off here. Josh Allen's got fine mechanics. They're repeatable. They've gotten better. But I think there are times where the ball just comes out a little weird, right? Feet might be a little bit weird every once in a while. It's not a big problem, but it does pop up, I think, at a higher clip than some of those other guys. And then Lamar Jackson, I think, with him, it's a little bit of the arm angles, but it's also just it's his footwork a little bit in terms of how he sets his base, where I think it can be too narrow at times and take away from some of his velocity and take away from some of his accuracy. So I think he can can get better with that. So those are the 10 traits that we use at the Draft Network. The one that I added for this was accomplishments. I think it's fair to rank these guys in terms of what they've actually gotten done on the football field through their NFL career. And I have it Patrick Mahomes 1, Josh Allen 2, Lamar Jackson 3, Joe Burrow 4, Justin Herbert 5. Patrick Mahomes has been the NFL MVP, the Super Bowl MVP. He's been in the AFC Championship game every single year that he's been the starter. I mean... (laughs) This guy's, this guy's off to, what, the greatest start of a career in the history of the NFL? He's clearly number one. I have Josh Allen, number two, uh, has reached unprecedented success in Buffalo. Uh, number two in the MVP voting. The playoff stretch that he had last year is unprecedented in the history of the NFL. I mean, he's special, right? Like, in terms of what he's gotten done. Now, you'd like to see him get to the Super Bowl, but you'd like to see him maybe be the NFL MVP. But I think I think what he's done over the last two years is, is really, really special. Lamar Jackson, number three. I mean, NFL MVP. But I don't know that he's – I mean, the playoff wins haven't been there like they have for Allen and Mahomes. I'm not trying to slight his resume. I just think he's number three. I don't think he's more accomplished than Mahomes or Allen. And what Allen's done as a thrower and a passer, excuse me, as a passer and a runner, is really, really, really outstanding. I got an alarm going off here. That's got to go off. Um, we have Lamar Jackson. Yeah, just Josh Allen's resume as a thrower and a runner trumps that of Lamar Jackson. Joe Burrow, number four. I mean, he got his team to the Super Bowl last year. I think you can debate. You can debate if Joe Burrow was – the catalyst, I think he did a good job in that run. I think it was more about the defense and how that defense adjusted and put that team in good spots to get to the Super Bowl. You know, I think he's only got one elite season at this point in time. And so I think there's a lot more for, obviously, there's a lot more for him to accomplish, but I don't think you can put him ahead of Mahomes, Allen, or Jackson. I Justin Herbert at four, at five, excuse me, which is last in this group. Statistically, his first two seasons are unbelievable. And I know he doesn't play defense, right? I get that. I know he doesn't play special teams, but I don't think he hasn't been to the playoffs yet, right? And, and everybody else has. Everybody else has been to the playoffs, won games. If you want to talk stats, Justin Herbert's probably number two. But the team success hasn't been there to the degree that these other guys have. And, and I, I just don't think you can compare his resume to Mahomes, Allen, Jackson, and Burrow and feel like he deserves to be higher than any of those four. So there you have it. So how does this all average out? This is uh, this is what it all boils down to, right? How does this average out? So I took all 11 categories and, and averaged out where these players, their average rank. I have Patrick Mahomes' average rank was 2.3. Josh Allen also 2.3. Joe Burrow 2.8. Justin Herbert 3.5. And Lamar Jackson 4.1. So there you have it. Josh Allen against the other top quarterbacks in the AFC. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. I love talking traits. I love breaking them down. And that's what we did here today on the podcast. And look, I know everyone's probably not happy with everything that I did here. And you take exception. Tell me. Tell me what you think about it. Leave it. If you're on YouTube, leave a comment. Send me a tweet at the Joe Marino. Let me know. And and if you take that grade of exception with it, do your own 
show. Do your own show on how you would do it, right? This is me. This is my thoughts on how I would stack these guys up in this category. And so I'd love to hear where you disagree, but also this is this is completely me. This is my takes on this. So this was my opportunity to share that, and I hope you enjoyed. Tomorrow, got a guest lined up. It's going to be fun. Excited to get another voice on the podcast to kind of get into the big topics that the Buffalo Bills are facing entering the season. So don't miss that. Come on back. Make sure you're subscribed. We'd love it if you took a second to rate, review, and share the podcast. Have a great rest of your day, and I look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow.